for us to be marketplace men and women, we need to be transformed, we need to be saturated, we need to be swimming in the world. The language that the heaven understand, the DNA that creation responds to is the world. <clears throat> you want to move the south and the north to align with you to the, for the mountains and the hills to dance and the trees to the uh, fields to clap their hands. We need to understand the language that they understand. There is no such thing as going to the marketplace where the world is waiting for us. And we cannot influence the world by our own experience. We need to influence them by the world. Each one of us have to have a secret place that we report to before we go to the world. It is so important that we have a secret place that we celebrate, that we allow the reigning monarch of the universe to speak to us. You know, a lot of, many years ago when I started this, you know, I keep on talking to the Lord, I said, Lord, this, 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 I keep reporting my bosses, I keep complaining about the job, and the Lord says, really, can I have a chance to speak? <laughs> because, you know, we pray, Lord, this, 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 amen, goodbye. And the Lord reminds me all the time, he says, I'm supposed to be the important person in this whole conversation, and when do I get to speak? <laughs> and then, you know, I have learned now that I, so I go to the secret place, that I immerse myself with his word. He instructs and directs me to the things that I need to do that day. The issues of that day, the temptation of us cutting corners, of complicating our witness, <clears throat> has to be addressed in the secret place before we go to the world. There's going to be some temptation that's going to happen to us, that we are going to jeopardize our witness, or maybe move a little decimal point of our report to make us look good. God always tells us that you need to speak to me every morning, because hell is busy in the dark times. In the evening, hell is busy to plant landmines and traps for you if you are not going to hear instruction from the throne room. The word is a very important <clears throat> part of our lives in the marketplace. The word has to be the superstar. But the Lord has spoken to me. When you preach and when you speak and when you teach, I don't want you to use my word as a fluff. I want you to use your experience as a fluff. I want you to use my word as a superstar. The, super, the word is enough to define the word, to explain the word. It has to be explained by the word. And uh, <clears throat> for us to understand what the word says, that I will bless the work of your hands, we need to be sustained by what comes out from the mouth of our Father. It is important for us to understand that there has to be a divine romance in our lives to the lover of our soul. This is, you know, I am now 65 years old. And I wish I have known the Lord very young. I walked with the Lord for 41 years. I was very religious growing up, put flowers on the altars of the church, have a Bible under my pillow and kiss it every morning. But only 41 years ago did I have a divine romance with the king. Yeah. And it is important for us <clears throat> to understand that this secret place <clears throat> is not optional. Before the decision making in the boardroom of the world has to be already decided in the secret place. Now when I have meetings and you know when we bring up these things, and I know that I am ready because I have faced him. I have, I have seen the radiance of his glory. The Bible says the breath of his mouth, the, 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 the embrace of the Lord in our lives. And so when you sit down in a boardroom meeting, you understand whether they're going to take your job away from you, whether, you know, whatever they're going to decide. You are established because you have heard the voice that used to direct you from the beginning. He said, I will, you will hear a voice from the back of you that will say, this is the place, walk in it. It is important for us to understand that this is the word that God is talking about, that we need to 
<clears throat> swim in it. You know, have you ever, I mean, the word is, the water is word. We need to swim. We need to swim in it. We need to be saturated, dripping wet, I mean, pickled by the word. <laughs> I, you know, so when I speak to different businesses today, because they ask me to, I will say, God is calling. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I speak to businesses today, <clears throat> and uh, I am not apologetic. When I, what I'm teaching them is from the word. You know, I'll tell you a story. One day I went to New York and they asked me to speak to a group of business people. <clears throat> and they want me to tell them how to build a business that's successful. So I told them, I said, you know, in the book of Habakkuk, you know, it's so beautiful. There was only one Baptist uh, young man there that probably understood what I said, you know, because Habakkuk is part of the Bible and everybody else are so excited. Where am I going to buy this book? <laughs> it is so amazing. <clears throat> and, the, and I know, but as I was speaking, this Baptist young man was already crying. He was probably repenting while I was talking. But uh, I knew that, that, I said, you know, there is, a, there is a, uh, an instruction from the book of Habakkuk that tells us how to, buy, to, to write a business plan. Write a vision and make it plain. <clears throat> I said, write a vision and make it plain. You need to have a vision. You need to, you know, to have, you need to meet your, your, uh, Appointment, you know, because you need to put a date. All those things I, I wrote down, and everybody got so excited about it. At the end of the, the meeting, uh, this lady came to me and said, where can I find this book? I said, don't worry, I'll give you one for free. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so when I speak today, I am not apologetic when what comes out of my innermost being is the word, because that's what we're made of. And it is important today that we understand that God has already instructed each one of us how to be successful in the work of our hands in His Word. A lot of the things that we have been waiting, we have been uh, paying, you know, to attend seminars, you know, these are copycats from the Word. And they charge God's children to pay this seminar very expensive when we could have gotten it for free in the instruction of our Father. Yeah. This is so amazing. You can clap your hands like that. So God is asking us today that we need to have this. We promise when we go to the marketplace that we need to be saturated, swimming in His Word. We see when God created the heavens and the earth, He said, He said, "Light be and light was." He said, "The birds of the air and there and it came to pass." He said, "The beautiful trees and it came to pass." But when He created man, He did not speak. He formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. We have been created to be vessels to be inhabited. Vessels to be filled. We will be indwelled with something if we will not put the word in it. When God breathed into our nostril, we became this reservoir that expands beyond measure. Overflowing. And the more word we put in, the more we're going to grow. The more we're going to swim. The more we're going to fly. Because we are vessels to be inhabited. There is going to be an indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives that if we are not going to feel it, the enemy is going to find it clean and empty. Because we will be inhabited. That's why it is so important that we in the marketplace, that we need to hear the word, read the word, embrace the word, be directed by the word. Because if not, <clears throat> the New York Stock Exchange will indwell in our man and our heart. And we will evaluate our success by the banking system of the world instead of the promise of His Word. It is important that we understand that because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. The only vehicle that is going to carry faith into you is the Word. Men and women who say, that, well, you know, I have faith, and who does not believe the word, who doesn't read the word, they do not have substance. Because faith is a substance. The substance that's going to bring into the material world the fulfillment of the promise is the word. You know, every time I don't know what I'm doing, it's the Lord, you promise in your word. <laughs> your Lord, Father, you said you open the doors. Yeah. I'm negotiating contracts. I said, Lord, you promise. I don't know what they're talking about right now. You understand? But you know what? We have been mandated to be excellent. So, you know, of course, I go read about what they're talking about. 
So the next meeting, I am the smart one. Okay. I know what I'm talking about. I said, excuse me, ask me the questions, I know the answers. <laughs> but, but you say we need to do due diligence, but at the same time we need to prepare ourselves because when faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, and if the word of God is active and alive, hello, do you believe that the word of God is active and alive? Yes. I know it's marketplace, but you know what? The foundation of our marketplace is the word. If the word of God is active and alive, it's sharper than any double tip to a sword. Yeah. Then if it is active and alive, it says that the word of God, in the book of Matthew, it says as lightning is, 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 uh, is directed to the east and reflected to the west, so is the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus Christ, who is the word of God, is like a speed of light. You see? If the speed of light is 186,000 miles per second, and the earth's circumference is 12,000 miles, that before you and I blink our eyes, the passage of light, the Word of God has already gone seven and a half times around the world before you and I blink our eyes. You know how fast is the answer that we need when we are in trouble in our business? You know how fast is the answer that God is going to be releasing to us? The vastness of His thoughts towards us. How vast are your thoughts towards us? That if I would count them, they will outnumber the grains of the sun. <laughs> you know how much is the grain of the sun? If the word of God is so fast and it comes around seven and a half times before we blink our eyes, and it stops for us, how fast, how wonderful are your thoughts towards me? That if the thoughts of the Lord today to us is so vast that it can out, I mean, you cannot count the sun, you cannot count the stars. But God says, when you sit down in the boardroom meeting, God is saying, and as you do not know what the answer, what is, what, what's going to be your next move, God is saying, my word is already passing so fast. And listen to me, why faster than the speed of light is the speed of talk, thought? 200 times faster than the speed of light. God is already speaking to you, Mila. We are listening to me. That's a no. That's a yes. That's a no. That's a yes. I know. And by the way, we cannot say maybe. It was anything in between is the, from the evil one. Either it's a yes or it's a no. In business, it's either a yes or a no. You know right away that this contract is not for you. You know right away that's the open door that God has given you. And so, God is asking us in the marketplace, we need to be men and women that understands His Word, that loves His Word, that our company is being sustained by the Word. This is so important. You cannot have a business plan and write down all your expansion and give it to the Lord. Can you please sign here? He is not a secretary of the world. He is the sovereign king. And he needs to ask us that when we do our business plan, it has to be infused, it has to be constructed by the word of God, or else it's not a business that's going to prosper. God has also asked us to be steward of our wealth, kingdom economics. It is not the banking system of the world, it is the economy of heaven. You see, the kingdom currency that God is asking us to do is the treasure of his work. You know, when God created the heavens and earth, he always says, you know, he created earth and it's good, and he, and he created the heavens and earth, and he says it's good, and he created everything else, and he says it's good. And one of the things that he said it's good, it's gold, it's good. A lot of Christians today need to have a mindset change about what gold is. It's very important that you understand that the gold that God is talking about is the vehicle that He is going to use for us to advance the kingdom of God, to, for us to mobilize the gospel, for us to be able to move to the work of the church. And we need to understand that gold is good. Now you cannot have access to anything you do not honor. You see, one of the things that we need to understand is, uh, in the marketplace, we need to honor. You know, honor is a posture of royalty. When you are a child of the king, the heavens and the earth watches and they know how you walk. When you honor one another, when you stand up, when you need to stand up. And sometimes in America, it is so, uh, hard for us to even call people yes ma'am, no ma'am, because we think we're going to be lower than them. 
But let me tell you something, I always tell this to my staff here and the staff in the Philippines. It is important that you know how to honor. Because honor is a seed that you plant to reap favor, and favor is the one that will open the door for you. The children today, whose parents are worried about the future, and they want to, the, the children to have open doors, all you have to do is teach them how to honor. Honor is the seed that you will plant in their lives to reap favor. And favor will always open the door for you. Try this for a test in your work. That when you pick up the phone and when they, and when you before you hang up, you're going to say, "Is there anything else I can help you with?" And be sure that they're going to hang up before you hang up first. And trust me, you will probably be one of those that's going to be in the promotion line next year. It's important that Christians today need to dress like royals and we posture and we walk like royals, honoring. You know, we have children today who's going to appear like smarter than the adults, and that's fine, but as long as it's going to be done in honoring. It is important that we understand this because if we do not honor what God created, including gold, you know the Jewish people, uh, it is so important, you know, during the World War, I mean, they're like, what, 2% of the United States population, and uh, there's so many of them in the Fortune 500. That's amazing. They're 10%. They're one half of, I don't know, level, uh, a fraction of 10% of, 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 of the world population, and yet they have most of the poacher prices because they know how to honor the things that God honors. In fact, every time the, the father blesses the children, they're always going to say that you will be blessed with Ephraim and Manasseh. Security, financial security, and stability in and steadfastness in the spiritual things, including economic stability. They look at prosperity and blessing, including with the gold that they are going to inherit. The gold in that place is God. But yet we have been taught that the love of money is evil. Or money is evil, but the love of money we need to be men and women who's going to say, yes, Moses, we are going to build the tabernacle, and we're going to pour our gold over the tabernacle, and until it's going to overflow, and then you say, stop, we're not going to stop. We're going to be men and women that's going to say, Pastor, you do not have to worry about finances. We're going to build the building. We're going to release all the missionaries because we will support whatever God is going to ask us to support. This is important that we understand, that we need to understand that we have been created and marked because God says, I need you in the work of the ministry. You do not have to have a pulpit. God says, I just want you to make sure that the gold is going to be funded properly where it should be. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? That is equal opportunity, employer. I want to explain that to you. I mean, he's not impressed with your paycheck. Right. I'm telling you, I, I don't care whether you're a CEO, it doesn't matter how much money you make. God says, when you work for me, when you work in the morning, when you work at noon, you work in the evening, I'll pay you the same. And I told the Lord, that's not fair, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and God says, you know what, Mila, because I'm not impressed with your paycheck. Each one of you have been given a seed, a mustard seed, a measure of faith. And what you do with that money is not going to be the equation of the how heaven is going to evaluate you. How much of that money are you going to plant as a seed? There it is. Heaven always evaluates a seed. He's not impressed with the multi-millionaire. He's not impressed with whether you're making 10000 a month. He's not impressed. He's impressed with you understand that the seed is the word. And seed time and harvest will never cease. Whatsoever you plant, you're going to reap. And God is asking you the wages of the world. I could give you $20 a month. But if you're going to use a, in that $20 as a seed, there it is. Now the heavenly banking system is going to work. The multiplication anointing is going to come. The press down chicken together is going to come. Yeah. Hello, the overflow is going to come. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. In other words, we are in the same, the same foundation of anyone who's running this race. God is saying, just understand the seed, Mila, because the kingdom of God works by seed. And so God says, so do you understand now that I'm not impressed with your paycheck? I want you to understand, do you, are you going to be the person who understands the seed time and harvest? 
as long as this earth will last, seed time and harvest will never cease. We need to be mobilizing silver and gold. It is not going to be owned by mammon. Listen, the kingdoms of the world has tried to put their names on the silver and gold. They make all this paper money, like us, we keep on printing money right now. And we put, you know, we sign our, our name and they can say that's the gold of America. Because they, we have a lot of, of money of gold in our reserve. Well, we don't. But, you know, we just keep on signing, right? Because we think that we can put our name on it and that is laughing, it's the silver and gold is mine. And I will move and mobilize it any time I want to. And this Sabbath year, the year of Jubilee, Sorry. September 2015, is the release of the anointing of Jubilee. Hallelujah. God is asking you and me to be in a position today to receive Amen. the overflow that heaven is going to release to his churches. I believe that we are now in position today to receive that overflow that God has. That's right. I really do believe that we need to prepare ourselves to be a candidate to receive the wealth transfer of the world. Yes. Because our own Father would say, enough is enough. This gold and silver, you try to put your name in it, I'm going to tell you again, it is mine, Egypt, and I am going to bankrupt your economy, and I am going to cause my people who's going to go and worship me to bring every gold and every silver in this country for the purpose of worship to the king. That's right. That's where we're at. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Because God is asking us today that your benchmark is how you take care of the real treasure. In Luke 16, 11, it says, Therefore, if you have not been faithful to the unrighteous mammon, who will commit you to your trust true riches? I'll pause a little bit and explain this to us, because we need to understand this. If we have not led anyone to the Lord today, if we do not see the harvest of souls in our lives today, are we failing our report card and finances? Because if we do not know how to work finances, then heaven is saying, how can we trust you? So, if we are intercessors today, we are saying to the Lord, yes, I'm praying for souls, but my bank account is part of the benchmark you will see in my life. If the people of the world today who is going to adopt children, that before they can qualify, one of the checklists is, can they afford to take care of these children? Mm -hmm. When we cry for souls today, we're also selling, telling heaven, I give you permission to take over my bank account. Whatever it takes, may it be my time, may it be my reputation, may it be a cut, <coughs> a paycheck, as long as you have an assignment for me to win a soul there, then do it. So when our, we, we go for a job, our benchmark is not how much they're going to pay us, although we need to be white in negotiation. But that is not the primary reason why we're working there. Amen. I work for $7.50 an hour when I started in the place. And later on, <clears throat> they said they could not afford me. But they keep me anyway for another 30 years. Because God has a purpose. God is asking us today that we need to honor the silver and the gold. We need to be good stewards. That when we go to the mall, we are not going to spend and, and use something that's not us, not, that, that's not ours, including our time. I, I'm saying this to you because this is how the Lord trained me in the marketplace. But when I go to the mall, the mall is not going to lure me to <coughs> spend all my money, including what's not mine, the top. So when I go to church, and when they say it's time to worship, because tithing is worship. Amen. And by the way, in tithing, you do not have to smile. It's not a requirement. It's just obedience. That's right. When you give after you tithe, you can be cheerful. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you be cheerful if God promised you a 30 and 60, 100 fold return? Mm -hmm. But when you tithe, it is not really a requirement for you to be joyful. You just need to obey. Amen. That's a requirement of the tithing. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you, these are the principles that my company has come in. And the Lord has exploded us, expanded us, and blessed us. 
Because when we sit down in the church today, and we have tapped into what is not ours, and when they ask for an offering, and you can say, I cannot participate today. And then later on, the Holy Spirit is going to convict us. But before we know it, this justification comes, well, they just want my money. Just my money. And that's why I don't like to come to this church. Instead of us repenting, now we have excuses. I need to say this to the marketplace people. A part of your business plan is saying, what is his is his. I can't touch it. And Father, after I have established that, I'm going to plant into your kingdom. And I believe. I am not going to go to the 20%. I'm not going to go to the 10%. I believe that you said in your word, 30, 60, 100 fold return. That's a good way to start. And that's why we can rejoice. That's why God says, when you give, rejoice. Amen. I said, wow, I can really rejoice. Can you imagine? I mean, the stock market never promised me 30%. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, those of you who are on, uh, I step on your toes, God, uh, your pastor will heal you today. <laughs> <laughs> but mammon has to be under our feet. Mammon. Mammon cannot be our master. When we go to church and we plan in our business meeting, we're going to say, Mammon, today I am going to send you to the orphanage. Today I'm going to send you to the mission field. Mammon, today I'm going to send you to support my pastor's travel expense. And Mammon says, yes, master. Now that's what it means. God says, you cannot have two masters. I'm your master. You need to make Mammon. You will be a master to Mammon. That is what kingdom economics is. And when we understand that, we're going to have a prosperous business, and we're going to walk in health. Health is not just our body. Health is our mind, our conscience, our sleeping time, our resting time, because we can say all oh, is well. Health is a kingdom dwelling. Kingdom blessing is a fatherhood ministry, and I always say this. This is a guarantee from our father that we can go to sleep at night because he said, Mila, I have taken care of your right and I have taken care of your left. Because one day I asked the Lord, so Lord, why do you always say in your word that do not go to the right and the left? How come? You know, I'm very simple. I just ask this question. Said, Lord, how come you always say do not go to the right and to the left? And the Lord gave me in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 16, he said, because to your right I give you a long life. And to your left, I give you riches and honor. Your job is to make sure that you walk in the path I prepared for you. Your right and your left, I got you covered. Don't worry. God, that is my fatherhood ministry to you. I will protect you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And the fathers of the world can deliver what they promised their children. I am your father. I can do better than that. And so God is asking us today that we need to understand that there is a kingdom blessing that they call the fatherhood ministry. Kingdom citizenship is not just salvation, but it's also posture, as I said. When we, are, we come into the kingdom, God dresses up his children. We act like children of the king. We honor like children of the king. It doesn't matter whether we like our president or our leaders, we need to pray for them because that's what royals do. If you don't like your boss, it doesn't matter. You respect your boss. Exactly what is expected that you're supposed to give him eight hours of the day and don't witness during the eight hours because you were not paid to witness. Mm -hmm. Let your life be the sermon that you preach and your lifestyle influence them. I always tell this to my staff. You cannot read your Bible. You cannot pray for someone and you cannot counsel someone when you're being paid by your boss eight hours a day. We need to infiltrate the secret place and we cannot compensate because we did not spend time with him, because we did not read the word when we're supposed to, that we're going to use our boss time to do it. I know that it's very hard. Listen, the world today is looking for royal men and women who will work for them. Pharaoh is looking for Joseph today, who has his interest in mind, who understands his dream, that he is going to pursue this dream, and while he is there, this dream will be fulfilled, because that's the mandate of the king, that I have placed you there, Joseph, 
So Egypt can be saved. And in the process of saving Egypt, I am going to bless my people even more than I have blessed the world. This is important. God is asking us that when we are saved, we have to understand that we have a new passport, we have a new name, we have a new dwelling, and that census in heaven has already had our name in it. And we are only passing through. So every decision we're going to make in business, it is temporary. God is asking us today that the, the protection that he gives us in our health, that he is going to bless the bread and the water that we eat. Now, <clears throat> although God is not surprised because he is all-knowing, I believe the inhabitants of heaven are surprised because there are a lot of children of God going home early. Where are you home? You're just 30 years old. Who's taking care of your responsibility? You're two years old and you're five years old at home. Well, I will take care of my health. Kingdom dwelling is, God is asking us today, we need to be alert, you, you need to fulfill the length of your days because God says, I don't want, I can't, the kingdom of heaven today cannot afford another casualty. Well, ISIS is killing everybody, we need to make sure that you and I are going to be intact in, 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 in position where God has asked us so we have a lot of things to do. In the marketplace, people, God is asking us, I don't want you to be sick in your body so I can, so you can be removed from your position. It's very important. You know, sometimes a lot of Christians go to work, they have a headache, or they're not in the mood because they just ate, uh, you know, a pizza and, and a whole apple pie, and then, you know, when they go to work, they cannot think. You understand? Well, you know, we heard here in the boardroom meeting, we're, talking about all these important things, whether we're going to put abortion in or whether we're going to have this program team. And because you cannot concentrate, because you did not take care of your health yesterday, and you come to the boardroom meeting and you're going to be overruled by everybody's vote because you went to sleep. And God is saying, when you go to the marketplace, we need to be alert. That's right. We need to be healthy in the marketplace. And we need to say, no, I'm not going anywhere until God calls me home. And he said, he's going to give me the length of my day. Yeah. I have a ministry to finish. Yeah. Are you guys excited about this one? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. I'm excited here. Yeah. <laughs> we need to also have a kingdom mindset. <clears throat> is this. To him who is able to do immeasurably above and beyond what you can ask or imagine. Part of the requirement of the Lord for all of us is that our imagination participates in our worship. It is not just the words that you say. It's not just the posture that we do. It is also the mindset that we have. We need to be careful what we feed our mindset, our imagination. You see, when we love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our being, it becomes worship. In the marketplace, when we are going not only going to say, and we are, not, we are not only going to say, but we are also going to believe what we say, and do what we believe, and imagine what we believe, heaven is watching us, and they're watching, and everybody, we're going to have a showtime watching. <laughs> this young man and this young woman is speaking something coming out of her mouth from her heart, and it shows in her posture, but more than that, it shows in her imagination. When we say, Father God, I am healthy, I am strong because you said so, in that very moment, your mind is also imagining you walking out of the wheelchair, walking out of your sickness, walking out of all the things that you walk through, because you're agreeing with the word. And the heaven is saying, and God saying, showtime, everybody turn on the television. Yeah. Let's watch this young man and this young woman walk. And as you are walking without you even talking, they're watching your mind and agreeing with the word. And God says, agreed, 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 agreed. And all the angels of heaven say, it's done, it's yeah. done, it's done. Yeah. Because our mindset is to align with the word. Now, having said that, we need to, as a church, understand that if 38% of the church, or 68%, in fact, higher than that, is dabbing into pornography. Is it possible that our imagination is not part of the worship that God requires? Is it possible that God is speaking to us today that we, if we are in the marketplace, we need to be different from the world and what they're watching and what we're watching? 
Because if we are watching what the, what the world is watching, then our imagination is contaminated and there is no showtime. Yeah. And heaven cannot agree with what we're saying because our mindset is not synchronized with what we are asking. That's why, as marketplace people, God says, I will bless you. Press down, shake it together, running over. I will bless the work of your hands. Yeah. But God is requiring us to be healthy in our body and to be healthy in our mind. Kingdom appointments. I'm going to breeze through this and I'm just going to focus on, on and you can read this because I want to be praying for you because the Lord said, there's some people here that I will restore to you what the world has eaten in your life. There's some of you here that we don't want to go back to where you were before. The business that you started or the job that you wanted, you just want to just shut it down. And God is saying to you, I'm going to restore to you because I need you in the marketplace. I need you to show up every day. And I want you to oppose what the enemy is doing in the gates of the city. Because God says, I have called you to possess the gates of the city. I want to just uh, go through this two weeks of time. I will have to come back to finish the rest of it. This time I really have to finish it. God is asking us today that one day the Lord told me, Mila, I, I created, before I created the heavens and the earth, I created time. Your job is to be a good steward of what I created. Because I always complain, Lord, I am so busy. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, hello, I'm a nurse. I'm a businesswoman and I'm in ministry. How am I supposed to do all this? And God said, there's one lady over there, and the Lord told me, Mila, you don't need to create another schedule. I want your life to be observed by the world. If you want to disciple, then let people watch you as you observe my commandment. You do not have to have another schedule so people, so you can have another time added to your to your schedule because you don't have it. But as they are going to come to your home, as they are going to watch you in your work, as you are going to, to, to influence the marketplace, they're going to see a sermon in your life and how you deal with the business, how you respect your bosses, how you submit to your husband, how you take care of your home, how you be a wife as and a mother, and they let the world see you. Because Jesus said, you follow me. His biggest instruction was this, follow me. Let my life influence you, and let my lifestyle be the sermon that I preach. It is important that we understand that when God has asked us today, that we have to go to work. Now, let's define work. Work is a covenant promise. It became a curse because of sin. The thorns and thistles that the cursed land grew is put, was put upon the brow of Jesus Christ. That was not just there for a prop. That was not just there for a decoration. That was an exact, a direct confrontation with the curse of sin. The thorns that, that from the land that was cursed was put on the head of Jesus Christ that instead of sweat that he told Adam, with the sweat of your brow, you shall labor. You see, work now has been replaced with labor. We do not have time for our family. We do not have time for church. We are going to be stressed out because we have to do this. And everybody is pressuring us. It has become a curse. It has now become a job instead of the work of our hands. But Jesus came to break the curse. He said, I am going to break the curse of labor. And instead of you sweating it, Adam, I am going to have my blood drop in my brow so you do not have to labor. Now you go back to work. When we go back to work, we become dangerous against the kingdom of hell. Amen. Can you imagine Monday morning all of us go to work? Woo! And I am telling you, the world is going to shake and hell is going to have a heyday because, hello, we're taking over. Amen? Amen? It's very important. So God is asking us, can you please just follow the word and let the amen. You know Jesus, one of the names of Jesus is the amen. You know what this that amen is? Every time you say amen, you say in Jesus' name. That's what we're saying. 
And every time we say amen to something we don't really mean, we're taking his name in vain. Do you guys, the Lord told me, Nila, you stop saying amen if you do not mean it. Right. You know, we, we do it as a cliche in our Amen, God. Amen, brother. Amen, sister. Oh, what did you say? Hey, just amen. <laughs> what did you just say in the name of Jesus? Are you saying in Jesus' name? And then we don't follow it, we just use his name in vain. The amen is the exclamation, the period, the one that seals our declaration, and when it is done, heaven and earth right. has to obey it because it's illegal for creation not to respond to the name about all men. Mm. When we go to work and we say, Father, amen, you have brought me here and it shall be done. And I am not looking, I'm working for a job, I'm working for work. Now, let's read this. Can everybody read this? In Genesis 22, together. By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, I have not, you have not withheld your son, your only son. In blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens and the sun which is in the seashore. And your descendants shall possess, everybody say, possess. Yes. The change that word to Yeresh. Yes. Say it again, Yeresh. Yes. This is an aggressive takeover. Today, if you're going to answer the call in the marketplace, you're going to receive the anointing of takeover. I am here to influence, to infiltrate, I'm here to remove and to restore what God has given me. And when we do that, God is going to say to you, I take pleasure with the prosperity of my servant. You want to give God pleasure today? Prosper. Hello? You want to give God pleasure today? Prosper. Take the gold that he owns and the silver that he owns and take it to the worship thing where the temple is and so we can do the work in the end times and win souls for the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. So today I'm going to be reading what God has said to me that I want you to anoint, I want you to bless those people who's ready to go to the marketplace. And I will release to you the double portion of anointing. And I always pray this, the sign of good leadership is this. You know, Jesus is a good leader, right? Amen. He said, greater things you shall do because of the Father. A secure leader is not going to be afraid if there's somebody who's going to be bigger, richer, faster than them. So I learned that, as the Lord, I pray for every staff, for every associate, to be bigger, better and richer than me. But first, you have to be rich. So you have a benchmark to make them richer. <laughs> Hello? Yes. You're going to say, so they can be poorer like me. <laughs> you need to be father, that they can be bigger, faster, and richer than me. That father, that anointing that you have given to infiltrate a piece of business, that they can do bigger and greater things. So I want those of you who want to receive this call, I'm just being obedient. Well, there's some young man here sitting in this place today. He's going to be sitting down in the boardroom meetings, Atila and his companies. And he is going to be a blessing to the church. There's some of you in this place that God is reminding you, do not be afraid in this economy, because I am your father, which is an honor I will give you. And I will give you the length of days. So I want to ask my staff, we have some, this one that it says, actually, <clears throat> uh, uh, this says, a voter is work and worship. You have made a decision today. I might not be preaching beyond the pulpit. I might not do, you know, ministry in the church, but I have been called to ministry, work and worship. And when you do that, God is saying, I am going to bless the work of your hands. And I will restore to you what the enemy has stolen from you. 